Next up, we have Sin Wan from Uniswap Labs, and he will be discussing uh, economic security of on chain oracles. So, Sin Wan. Uh, hey everyone, uh, my name is Shin and I'm a researcher at Uniswap Labs. I gave this talk during DeFi Security Summit already, so if you have seen that one, then you know, you're going to see it again. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, the agenda today is I'm going to start by motivating the question uh, real, real quick, because everyone here should know about it, and then uh, sort of define the, the scope we're working with, the framework we use to evaluate um, the security or, or maybe manipulation robustness of a particular Oracle design. And once we have that framework, we can see how, how do we optimize around it um, and how do we design the protocol so that optimizing the Oracle for that protocol is then easier. Um, so yeah, so to, to start, first, you know, there's many, many uh, billions of dollars collateralized by um, loans that are kind of evaluated uh, using oracles. Uh, some of them use Chainlink. Uh, Euler experimented with, with Uniswap. But uh, uh, as merge happened, some, some important uh, security assumptions was removed. So uh, they eventually also moved to, to Chainlink. Uh, people prefer Chainlink, presumably because you know it's theoretically less manipulatable, partly because it is sort of off-chain and less transparent to, to to attackers. But there are these like highly profitable trading strategies that people use, and and it doesn't always end very well for either party. Uh, and and the important difference here is uh, in, in proof of work, you you don't know who the next block proposer is, so. Uh, if you if you manipulate the oracle in this block, then uh, in the next one you have this highly distorted pool, and everyone is going to bid up uh, the ability to to trade against it, and so all your potential profit is just going to be wasted in this like on-chain gas auction uh, to to get into the block. Uh, but in POS, you know the next 32 blocks. Uh, Proposer ahead of time, and importantly, some of the large stake, uh, large stakers, they they might control several blocks in a row, right? And and that um, that really um, need us to assume that these guys are not going to kind of manipulate uh, a pool and then just censor every transaction that tries to correct the price in the pool. Um, okay, so. Sorry, I'm going to uh, kind of walk through the, the, the math of analyzing uh, Oracle manipulation cost. So uh, in, in each Uniswap pool, the price is kind of like, imagine a price on this horizontal line, and each tick is just one basis point movement uh, of the price. And so given uh, a required uh, kind of deviation from current mid price, uh, for a oracle of a fixed length, right? Let's say 30 minutes moving average oracle. You want to move it for 20% uh, uh, from the current value. Um, if you only control x blocks, where x is this uh, x axis, axis, sorry, that's a lot of words <laughs> of x. Uh, if you control five blocks, for example, then uh, you can look up here and you need to move the price by. Uh, 50,000 ticks, and 50,000 ticks means you move price up by one basis point 50,000 times, and that, that's kind of exponential, right? So the less block you control in a row, the, the farther away you have to move it in one shot in order to move this 30-minute TWAP oracle. Uh, the other thing is, uh, well, it should be a, a GIF, but <laughs> it's a PDF now, but uh, the, the liquidity distribution also changes through time. So it's kind of non-trivial to calculate the exact amount uh, that you would need ahead of time. Uh, but we did it. <laughs> so uh, for this WEATH USDC pool, uh, we were looking at the amount of WEATH required uh, to, to manipulate the pool 
um, by that particular amount, right? It's just a stylized example. I know you can do other attacks with less manipulation, but uh, and that's the amount of width. So somewhere last year you need I don't know 150 million width, which is like billions of dollars, in order to to manipulate this oracle, uh, but by this specific amount. Uh, okay, so. How do we think about the trade-off space uh, related to Oracle robustness design and, and, and manipulation? Well, there's a few parameters that you can tune uh, when you specify your Oracle, right? Uh, uh, for one, you, you have this trade-off between uh, Oracle liveness and cost of manipulation. So liveness means how fast uh, does your Oracle update in reaction uh, to new data points. Um, and the, obviously, the, the faster it reacts, the, the more live it is, but it also is very sensitive to the last data points, which might not be the correct data point. Uh, and again, like these are three lines based on different kind of liquidity uh, in, the, in the pool, and this is very stylized, right? It's not, it's not to scale. Um, but the uh, the, the, the higher the liquidity amount, the, um, the faster it's going to, to scale, right? As you increase your latency in your Oracle, the amount of um, a capital required to attack it um, goes up really, really quickly. The second trade-off is uh, if you fix your latency, you say, I, I have to have certain liveness assumptions, uh, you can also try to you know, generate uh, sort of defensive capital, whether it's capital owned by your own protocol or it's uh, borrowed capital using some some actual like lending on top of it, uh, or you can just build on a, a pool with a, with a very large uh, TVL already. Uh, but uh, um, this is to demonstrate that uh, the the scale actually goes uh, kind of sublinearly, right? Because you, as you increase your liquidity amount, uh, the, the marginal benefit uh, is, is sort of decreasing over time. Um, and finally, uh, you can also say, hey, my Oracle, maybe I need certain, uh, ha I have some liquidity, I have some latency requirement, but uh, I, ha I can make trade-off between how much deviation I can tolerate at one time, right? Uh, and, and then you have this uh, kind of constrained maxim uh, maximization problem where you say, okay, if I control all the liquidity, then uh, I only care about sort of uh, price variation outside a range. And within this range, it's all like natural noise and it's really not going to hurt my my products in a way, uh, then you can say, okay, uh, maybe I want to like distribute my liquidity in, in some range re related to the current price, and, and that's just going to kind of maximize the amount of uh, capital required to, to manipulate your Oracle. Um, but yeah, all stylized examples here. Uh, how to make better Oracles, I think mm, maybe the last talk also just covered it, but um, you have to know your objective first. Uh, you know, are you securing lending protocols, perpetuals, NFTs, uh, or governance? Uh, know your constraint. How, how realistically, how how much liquidity are you able to generate or or leverage for your protocol or for your oracle? Uh, you know, how much time you have, uh, liveness assumptions, etc. You should al always assume that someone is there to to do highly profitable trading strategies to the extent that there is, uh, and you know, get audits on your code as well as uh, your economic security assumptions. Uh, the last thing I want to say is Uniswap v4 hooks. Uh, Uniswap v4 basically allows uh, each Uniswap pool to have uh, this uh, call out to a arbitrary smart contract, uh, arbitrary subject to some constraint implemented within the pool, right? You're still subject to X, Y, K, for example, um, but you can do whatever you want inside that contract, including very complicated or very customized uh, Oracle logic. Uh, so let me skip this one. 
I'm going to yeah, talk about how to enhance Oracle uh, manipulation resistance, specifically with the examples tied to V4. Um, so the first thing you can do is you can increase liquidity, right? And there's two ways to do it. One is you can attract liquidity to your own uh, sort of protocol. Uh, and, uh, and, and you can specifically purpose that liquidity to be sort of this defensive layer um, for your Oracle. Um, and the other thing is you can, you, can, it, you can use very established pools, right? I just demonstrated that if you want to manipulate the, the wheat USDC pool, it's, it's practically impossible today because the, the total amount of floating wheat is not even enough to carry that attack. Assuming your protocol has built in like a 20% uh, deviation ro robustness or something. Uh, and sorry, uh, yeah, and you know, that's good because uh, you know, Uniswap v4, it, it allows like arbitrary hooks on arbitrary pairs, right? P completely permissionless, and you can, you, can, you can do a hook on uh, a with USDC pool if you want. Uh, the second thing is you, you can say, okay, I'm going to uh, design a product that's, uh, that does not require sort of instant updates from, from oracles. Um, and and it, de it depends on the exact product you're building. Uh, it's, it's really a non-trivial problem to solve. Like if you're building perpetuals, for example, I imagine that's going to have very uh, high liveliness assumptions. But uh, you can also kind of build your oracle in a way that uh, uh, it, it kind of take in uh, big updates slowly over time. So one example that my colleague Austin uh, recently talked about is truncated TWAP oracles. So uh, assume a, a big change coming, like 500% price updated within one block. We we'll just say, whoa, 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 let's take it easy. Uh, let's uh, add that 500% change in over the next 50 blocks or something. So there's a buffer. But uh, over time, if, if that price never reverts, then uh, the Oracle price gradually uh, moved towards the actual price. But if the, if the, if the price quickly drops back, uh, then we just ignore um, everything that has not been added. Right? Uh, yeah, again, uh, you can also increase deviation tolerance in your Oracle design. Like uh, You can design your product based on uh, some assumption about natural noise in, in price fluct uh, fluctuation, right? So like len lending protocols, you can have a higher, uh, I guess, uh, LTV? Forgot the exact word, but um, uh, you can require a higher collateral ratio, for example. Uh, or you can maybe do like gradual liquidation. Um, but yeah, that's it. I realize it's, it's, it's rather quick and short, but uh, if any questions, you can find me here or, or outside. <laughs>